Just at the end of this chapter, let's go over quickly the main drawing styles that we use to draw structures of organic chemicals. So we will actually very rarely draw organic molecules with every bond shown. We're going to be dealing with some big molecules and it would take us longer to draw the whole molecule than it would to actually discuss it if we had to show every single hydrogen atom. So it's actually going to be very rare that we'll draw structures like that. So first of all, condensed structures can be our first time saver. Right? Whereas if we had all these C's and H's, you can see it even gets to be uh, cumbersome. You don't really even have room for all of them around that carbon. So if we omit most of the lines, so if we just say CH3, right here is a CH3. Here's a carbon with three hydrogens. So CH3, CH2, see that? CH, attached to it is a CH3 and another CH3. So just kind of crawl along the line saying what's attached to each carbon. Another way to save a little space here is that if we have identical groups that are bonded to a common atom, we can combine those together. So take a look. Here are two of those CH3 groups. There's one there and one there. Those two CH3 groups are both attached to the same CH right there. So if you ever see groups combined together, that either means that they're bonded to a common atom, or if you have a whole big long chain, something like uh, you know, hexane, CH3, CH2, 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 CH2. So I've got a CH3, I've got four CH2s, and then a CH3 on the end. That's hexane. I can abbreviate that by saying CH3, CH2, and there are four of them repeating, and then CH3. So CH3, parentheses, CH2, parentheses, four, CH3. We cannot combine the CH3s together because they're not connected. They're not attached. They're on opposite ends of the molecule. So common mistake would be to say two CH3s, but you can only do that when they're actually hooked up together. All of these are attached together, so we combine them, right? These two CH3s in the compound above are both attached to a common atom, so they can be combined together. So, you know, having some familiarity with that sort of method will be helpful to us. There are times when we'll have something like that looks like this, CH3, uh, CH2, C double bond O, CH3. And notice in this one, I, I just sort of without thinking of it, I, without thinking about it, I drew bonds between the carbons, and that's fine. That's exactly identical to saying CH3, CH2, C double bond O, CH3. And believe it or not, that is exactly identical to CH3, CH2, CO, CH3. Think about that for a second. The only way that I can have COCH3 would be if that O was double bonded to the carbon. That would be different. Compare that to CH3, CH2, CH2, O, CH3. See the difference? Carbon, 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 carbon. Still got the carbons. The only difference is I put two hydrogens on that carbon. I'm not going to tell you right now, I'll have it in the notes that you can print off later on, but I want you to see if you can figure out what the difference is between those, where those oxygens are attached. So structures like this, I mean, I know that's subtle, but those are actually two different functional groups. The oxygens are actually in, in entirely different places. So consider where that oxygen has to be. Make sure carbon has four bonds every time. Save any more time than drawing those uh, condensed structures will be drawing line structures. The book calls them skeletal structures sometimes. I like saying line structures. So they actually show all the CC bonds, but don't show any Cs and they don't show any Hs. So in order for that to work, we have to understood that carbon atoms are either at the ends or the intersections of lines. 
hydrogens are not shown and are understood to fill carbon's valence. So if we show a carbon that's only made one C-C bond, we know that it has to have three H's attached to it. That just is understood. Atoms other than CNH are shown. And if we have something like an oxygen or a nitrogen, and if it has hydrogens, we'll show those hydrogens. So H is bonded to other atoms are shown. So we've got a little more complicated structures. Here's isoprene, uh, five carbons, so a four carbon chain. So I'm going to just recreate those bonds like a zigzag. Double bond between carbon one and two double bond between carbon one and four. So I've just made a zigzag and added lines for the double bonds. And then we have one carbon coming off of carbon two. It's a methyl group. That's it. So much simpler than drawing out all of the C's and H's. So we're going to make really good use of these line structures quite a bit. Methyl cyclohexane. I've got a six membered ring of carbons. Six membered rings will just get drawn as a hexagon because we understood that carbons are at each of the, uh, the points where the lines meet. I have a carbon with three hydrogens, a CH3 group attached to one of the carbons on the ring. So that's that same group there. Here's a carbon at the end of that line, and that's it. Uh, here's phenol, six-membered ring with alternating double bonds through it. Saw this in lab. This is a benzene ring. So a hexagon with alternating double bonds, and then we have to show the OH group. Remember, I show that H because it's attached to something other than carbon. I always show the O as well. So be very careful. A common mistake that students do when they're beginning is to think that the end of this line is actually a carbon, when in fact that's the bond between the carbon and the oxygen. So when you have an oxygen, the line that's attached to it is going from the oxygen to the carbon that it's attached to. So don't try to slip in another carbon in there where it doesn't belong. All right, so that's the end of chapter one for us. Uh, a lot of this should be review from general chemistry. If it's been a while since you've taken general chemistry, you'll need to take some extra time and make sure that you can go through this and feel comfortable with it. If this is straightforward to you, then that's excellent. Make sure to do the... Uh, do the homework problems, and if those are going well for you and you're checking your answers and you're getting those right, then you're doing the right thing. Uh, if you're checking your answers and you're getting things wrong, if there are some misconceptions, that's when you need to go back, go over that reading one more time, or go back to the section where we talked about it here and work on it that way. So we'll see you for chapter two.